guys um, and I'm so glad to be doing this Tuesday Truth with all of you, sharing in it. Um, yeah, so we are currently looking at the armor of God and today we are looking at the sword of the spirit. So I'd like to just get into it, um, but I do hope that you just give me some leeway because sometimes I really struggle to just talk into the camera. Um, so I'm not used to it, so yeah, just give me some grace there. So, Ephesians 6 verse 13 says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and when it is over, you will stand. Now the Bible says, or Paul says in the Bible, I'm finding my notes, that the sixth piece of armor um, is the sword of the Spirit, and that the sword of the Spirit represents the word of God. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of a sword, I think about slashing, maybe drawing blood. Um, and definitely in the Roman times, for a Roman soldier, you know, the sword was a very offensive weapon against enemies. And when sharpened, it could pierce through just about anything. Um, it was a very, very dangerous tool. And so, you know, the reason I'm telling you this is because when I first heard this verse, I, <laughs> I almost laughed it off um, as comical because I'd, I'd think to myself, oh, are we going to then have to throw the Bible at people? Um, and I know that sounds so much like a Bible basher. I don't know if that's what they meant by that term. Um, but it is something that, that I originally thought. I was like, no, the sword cannot be offensive because it will not hurt people. And yeah, that was my first mistake. Okay. Because we are not using the word of God as an offensive weapon against people. In Ephesians 6 verse 12, Paul says, we aren't fighting against flesh and blood, but against the powers of darkness. And so it's just beautiful that the word of God is all we need to fight against the, the powers of darkness. So yeah, to understand the connection between the sword and the word of God, it is first important to understand the power of God's word. So Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive and is active, sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, in judges and judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So it's really looking into those deep-seated um, truths and lies that we tell ourselves. So through our through God's word, we can distinguish between right and wrong because it's really working on our hearts um, and on other people's hearts as well. So as a result, we can then strive to live in a way that is free from sin. So if we know God's word and his word, his ultimate truth, then we can find confidence in knowing that it is our greatest weapon to defeat the powers of darkness because truth represents light. Unfortunately, though, <laughs> if we are lacking in knowledge of God's word, we really will struggle to fight against the enemy. Those who seek God's word and abide by it will be blessed. But it's not the same for those who don't. So John 5 verse 24 says, Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. And I think that's just beautiful. The fact that knowing the word of God is already enough of a weapon against the forces of darkness. We don't even have to, um, we don't even have to say anything to, to impede the powers of darkness. We just have to know and believe the Bible. Also, the sword of the spirit is very unique in that it can be used both defensively and offensively. So 
Although a sword is usually offensive, sometimes when people are sword fighting, for instance, or fencing, um, you might use the sword defensively to block it from, you know, um, hitting yourself. So um, while God's word can protect us from the lies of the enemy, as I've said, so just knowing the word helps you to protect you from powers of darkness. Um, it can also counter attacks. So, for example, um, Jesus actually uses God's word as an offensive weapon in Matthew 4 when Satan tried to test him in the wilderness. So, I don't know if you remember, Satan, um, Jesus went away um, into the wilderness for 40 days. This is where he didn't eat and didn't drink. Um, and during that time, the devil came to test him. And so Jesus, because he knew God's word, was able to stop the powers of darkness taking him over because he could um, fight against the devil with the word of God. And sometimes, I mean, it's not easy to take up the sword and fight against the enemy. However, we, excuse me, are not called to do this by our own strength. Excuse me. When facing trials, we can find peace in knowing that God is also on our side. Romans 8 verse 31 says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I just want that to sink in. If God is for us, who can be against us? If we know the word of God, as the sword of the spirit, we can take it up offensively to make sure that we do not get overturned by the powers of darkness, or we can take it defensively when other people are trying to sway us to the cultures of the world. And so it really is a beautiful part of the armor of God. So I encourage you to take up the sword of the spirit in your daily life and remember that God's word is the ultimate truth that we can stand on his promises. With God by our side, we are truly unstoppable. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, like I said initially, sometimes it can feel as though your word is not um, an offensive weapon. And we have to remember that we're not fighting against the people of this world. We're fighting against the evil in this world, Lord, the powers of darkness. And Lord, we know that your word is the light and your word can break through the powers of darkness because it is the light, Lord. Lord, I pray that you just help us to remember to use your word, Lord, even when we find it boring, even when we find it um, tedious, Lord. Lord, you are you are good and you give us grace even in those moments, Lord. But I do pray that you give us the strength and ability um, and love for your word, just like you have, Lord, because that is what will help us to fight against the powers of darkness, Lord. I thank you for all these wonderful people, um, all these wonderful teenagers who are currently listening. Um, and I pray that you be with everyone throughout this week further. In your name I pray this. Amen.